Tanji Please begin today's teaching by generating a clear mind with the motivation for the benefit of all mother sentient beings who are as vast as space to attain for their benefit to attain supreme and most precious state of full awakening buddhahood and the dharma which we will be listening to today in discussing is the lamrim chenmo and based today with uh with the lessons that we've been going through within the lamrim we're going to uh, do a class as um like Venerable Tendro Anitendro had requested last class to do a more guided meditation or a full, you know, a full class period with just guided meditation. So we will go um, through the instructions for generating serenity and all the different um, ex ex the instructions regarding serenity, and we'll do the guide. We'll we'll do it like a guided meditation to to go through the practice. Well before we begin to meditate on serenity, if you have a clear understanding in your mind of the path, the, the road to go through, uh, including all the different steps and the step-by-step the -step process to generate serenity and attain it, then um, it will be much easier. It'll, be benefit, it'll benefit you a lot when you actually go into the meditation. So let's start by doing a review of those steps and the process. What uh, I think we've lost the audio. Or is that just me? Oh, we can hear you. Can anyone else can DNK audio? Yes, yes, we can hear it. Okay. Yes. I think my headphones just died, probably. Sorry, sorry. Mm. Stein Gum 
So when we talk about meditation in general, then we have the different kinds of practices involved, but the end goal of these is to arrive at the realization of serenity and the insight to arrive at the practice to develop those practices, finally resulting in the uh, attainment of what's called the yogic direct perceivers, and then ultimately the omniscient consciousness. So within all of those different kind of final goals of meditation or final meditations, where are we going to be practicing and describing today? That's from beginning a practice of meditation, going up through the attainment of serenity. So we'll do the guided meditation for roughly an hour now. And as we're doing it, if you feel the need to take notes, then you may, that's fine. And at the end of the hour, approximately one hour, then if you have any questions that came up, then we'll do some, we'll save time for a Q&A. Uh, and so when we have the different, many different kinds of instruction, then most of you have probably received uh, meditation instructions and have some experience meditating. The, the practice that we're doing now is going based on the explanations of the Lamrim Chenmo, of and when we take the Lamrim Chenmo and see, so what is that itself based on, then we have as the sort of fundamental source text, the Sandi Nirmochana Sutra of Shakyamuni Buddha, um, the Sutra Unraveling the Intent, and then based on that Sutra, then we have a series of skilled and realized masters who further explained and gave clarification about the different practices. So we have uh, Maitreya who gave the, who posed the treatises uh, distinguishing the middle from the extremes, as well as the sort uh, ornament of Mahayana Sutras. And then we have Papa Tome Arya Asanga, composed many texts on meditation, and then so on, going down throughout the years, um, arriving at Jay Rinpoche himself, who composed Lama Chembo, and then many other scholars who gave commentaries on that text too. So we're going to be focusing on what's stated in the Lama Chenmo. <laughs> Ani to begin with, we'll start by looking at the five faults and the eight antidotes of application and or just called the eight antidotes. And so the beginning, the very beginning is to look at the fault of laziness and then the four antidotes to that, which are sometimes termed the four antidotes of the, the causal process of generating effort. Um, so what are those four? Confidence, yearning, effort, and pliancy. 
And then we're going to be going into the nine mental states. So we'll do this by way of sort of merging the explanation of the five faults and eight antidotes with the explanation of the nine mental states. So now we're looking at the way of practicing these five or of eliminating the five faults by way of the eight antidotes in terms of which stage, which of the nine mental states are they, do they become the main practice? So before meditating, before beginning the meditation practice process is when the four causal processes, the, the four causal um, antidotes, including effort are done. So the confidence, yearning, effort, and pliancy are before meditation. Then we go through the first and second stages um, of uh, mental states. And on the third and fourth mental state is where mindfulness becomes the most prominent practice or antidote. Then the fifth and sixth is where vigilance, the most prominent practice. The seventh and eighth is where the antidote of the intention of application is most relevant. And then on the eighth, uh, I'm sorry, and then on the ninth state, the last one is where non-application or sometimes called, calm, uh, here it's written as calmly established equanimity, equanimity is, is what's practiced. And so, you know, we explain them sort of as one group, those eight antidotes, and the explanation is given, but when you're going and doing the actual practice, then which antidote is becomes more prominent it, it is different depending on which of the states you are currently in. And now when we look at what will be the object of meditation, so we know that there are many different objects of meditation that can be used, many different focal objects. But for tonight, for this practice, let's all use the object of the form of Shakyamuni Buddha's body. So Shakyamuni Buddha um, is, as, as you all know, stated as one of the possible objects of observation. 
and then uh, it, so for that reason it's it's a suitable object of meditation to use in addition though it's it has extra benefits because it also gives us a chance to it acts as a cost to accumulate great store of merit as well as to purify a great amount of obscurations and it also just simply allows us to recall the buddha so we're going to use that and visualize it in a way that suits your mind that feels comfortable in your own mind no, it doesn't have to be super big, doesn't have to be extra tiny, sort of a, an average size or a size that that fits um, your that fits your mind and makes you comfortable when you visualize it. What <laughs> 제시 now in the actual full explanation there were different descriptions of what kind of environment you should have for meditation what kind of posture you should have the condition of your body and so forth so for this practice now we won't go into any detail about those topics just because of want of time so we'll go right into the meditation itself. Uh, so then to start, let's just get ourselves, our body and mind into a relaxed state. So for the physical posture, we're not going to go into the details of the seven points of the Varajana posture, but just, you know, sit kind of naturally and comfortably and put your you know, thumbs together, watch uh, Genla as he has his hands, with the palm, the right palm on the left with the thumbs touching. And, um, no, I'm sorry, this is the left palm on the right, right on the left. I'm, uh, I have uh, my arms a little, <laughs> anyway. So um, just watch how Genla's doing it. And then the main thing you said is to sit comfortably and allow your mind to be very relaxed and, um, and your body to just kind of naturally sit. <laughs> When we begin meditation, it is the right on the left, by the way, for the palms. When we begin meditation, then the main obstacle at the start is laziness. And the antidote to that laziness are these four causal antidotes which bring about effort. So we're going to start by focusing on those four antidotes. Nubat 
so the first of the antidotes is confidence. And what is the confidence in? Confidence in the advantages and the great benefit that you would have if you had attained serenity. If you have shamatha, then how incredible will that be? How useful will that be? So think along those lines. So of course, there's the just present immediate benefit of having your body and mind be extremely com comfortable, relaxed and happy and in a pleasant state. And then you have the advantages that are in the long term of being able to overcome the afflictions and be able to root out the afflictions. You're going to have the conditions to be able to really completely eliminate your obscurations and negativities and accumulate incredibly strong virtue and continue to continuously progress along the path and have the basis needed to generate the wisdom realizing emptiness. That's the Vipassana meditation, realizing emptiness. And so, in summary, just how incredible will this be once I attain serenity and have confidence in that, have this clear and inspired sense of confidence that I, if I attain this, then it will be so worthwhile, so valuable, and help me in all these incredible ways. Now with that confidence and this basic thought, how incredible will it be? I'm able to attain this single pointed concentration of serenity. Now think, I will attain it. May I attain it? And so this is now the second antidote of yearning. That strong wish, may I attain this? I will attain it. And then with this aspiration, already present, thinking about, again, this very unique and special qualities of this kind of concentration, the special concentration, and how great it will be once I attain it, then really generate this kind of joy in the idea of attaining it and practicing to attain it. So with that joy, then, 
really have the determination, the thought, I'm going to practice and meditate until I attain serenity. This is the antidote of effort. And so now with that joy that has a the quality of determination, so you will engage the effort, then think that by engaging in the practice, now you have the, now I think or feel that now I've attained the ability to continuously engage in this practice. And so that is the antidote of pliancy. The pliancy, which allows you to continuously bring your mind into this practice. What Chao Lela so the first part that we just went through is rel related to the part of the text that was under the heading, what to do before uh, focusing on the object. Now we'll go into the section, which is under the heading of what to do while focusing on the object of meditation. And so this means we begin the actual meditation. So please visualize now Shakyamuni Buddha. So he is golden. His right hand is touching the earth in front of his knee. His left hand is in his lap in meditation um, mudra with an alms bowl that's filled of nectar. He radiates golden light from his body. And the size, once again, doesn't have to be too large and not too small. So just visualized at a size which sort of naturally feels comfortable in your mind to visualize. And then if you have a 
habit already of visualizing the Buddha and meditating on the Buddha's form, then this will appear for you easily, readily. If you do not have such a strong habit, that's okay as well. And if there's just a sort of general rough outline of a golden form, even if it's more like a, a, a rough outline or even a blob or just a rough object, that's also fine. But just hold that in mind, the Buddhist form, as clearly as you're able to get it. And the, the Buddha is sitting on a throne, which is um, has lions supporting it. And then he's sitting on the lotus seat, as well as a moon seat on top of the lotus seat. Then the Drambhaji's titi. And so this entails the first of the nine mental states the state of mental placement by repeatedly reflecting, thinking of this exact object, Shakyamuni Buddha, repeatedly bringing to mind Shakyamuni Buddha and just keeping this very same object itself. Extend the duration of your focus, extend the duration of your abiding on this object just this very object. And this now becomes the second of the nine mental states, continuous placement. Then and now the mind, even though you wish it to stay continuously on the focal object of Shakyamuni Buddha, doesn't stay exactly as you wish it to. Because there's distraction, the mind wanders off, wanders and scatters off to external objects, external thoughts. And so because of this, we need to generate the power of mindfulness. 
So feel that you're generating the power of strong mindfulness that enables you to continuously remain on this object and to counteract that distraction. So this power of mindfulness allows us to achieve the, four, the third mental state, patched placement. So feel that you're now able to overcome this distraction and with mindfulness remain over a longer period without break on the object. The <laughs> By continually engaging and strengthening that mindfulness, now you're able to even go more deeply internally. You're able to tame and pacify the mind more fully and really remain in a stronger, more stable way on the object. So this more stable abiding on the object now is achieving the fourth mental state, close placement. So feel that you're now really internally focused in a strong and powerful way. Then and now, as you continually to deepen your focus on Shakyamuni body, make the mind very stable internally, then there is a risk that subtle laxity may arise, mind becoming too internally focused or withdrawn. And so in order to counteract that, now the force of vigilance of the ability to notice when 
subtle faults are arising is, is needed. So now with the increasing the force of vigilance, you can notice, you can recognize that the subtle laxity is beginning to arise when it does. Say, oh, that's subtle laxity, the mind getting too withdrawn. And so lift up the mind, perk up the mind at that. Increase the clarity aspect, the clear appearance of the Buddha. And so you feel that you've now gained this power of having the, sorry, this force vigilance so that you're able to go through without uh, falling into the subtle laxity. This achieves the fifth mental state of taming. ほとんどね、ジェネシムシンティブコネタ、ティジブコラミネチコミュニティ。あにやんシンティブキュエンティギシュクティテジチェタビケンシネヤ。あにやん南ミンティエギニャガジレプロチェワジュタトネ。タン
so now having the very strong force of mindfulness as long as well as the strong force of vigilance the mindfulness not forgetting the object shakyamuni buddha but maintaining the focus single-pointed focus on the object and the very strong vigilance that's able to see these oncoming subtle faults even when they're just very subtle laxity relaxity and subtle excitement and thus avoid them so you're able to overcome these subtle faults right as they arise so with these two forces now bringing in the force of effort enthusiasm with joy and having a strong meditation practice a strong single pointed concentration continue to strengthen your concentration feel that you've achieved the seventh mental state the state of complete pacification Attendez, the and through this force of enthusiasm, keep continuously strengthening your mindfulness and vigilance. You now arrive at a state where you don't need to make strong effort to generate them at all. Just through the habit of having practiced them, just a tiny initiation, initiating the engagement of mindfulness and vigilance is enough to continuously remain with a stable abiding and a stable clarity on the object. So your concentration is extremely stable and the force of mindfulness, vigilance, and enthusiasm are all powerful and stable. So the mind just continues without break for a long period now. Clarity, and stable focus. So this is now having attained the eighth state, one-pointed attention.
Tinba Simni Kubadikato, that in the Tian Karito is not Simni Gibicatras, GB Tobla Tene, Nibala Turi, GB Togita, Combatita, Petal Debundu, and it that Timbada Shishi and Mogoa, and it be Nimbo de Mogoa, Chingu Mayoma, that Simni Bala Turi, a Katsu, Padushan, and Shatwe, Tinigi Daji, that bet Sim Taj Kasna Tamaji, that Dusim Tama or Tindijira. Now, from practicing in that eighth mental state to continuously focus on the object for longer and longer periods of time, simply by creating that strong habit, you now have no longer any need to generate mindfulness, vigilance, or enthusiasm. Hurt. Now your mind naturally, spontaneously abides on the object with complete clarity and stable abiding for as long as you wish without any need to make any effort, effortlessly. Then there's no chance that the faults of laxity and excitement can arise and your mind abides spontaneously on the object. And this is the ninth mental state, balanced placement. The and so now as your mind remains for a very long period of time without distraction, naturally, effortlessly on the object, feel that your mind is now completely serviceable, workable, that you can Place the mind in virtue for as much as you want, without any obstacle. So this is now mental pliancy. So feel that you have attained the pliancy. Tindu Jinita, 
sim le su rumi sim xin jang de la de ni di sim de se ge lung di lung di an in pe le su rumi pe ka zu bo de gu ne gu tu ba tin de ji cha su sa mo tin de sa mo dan shi di ji and dependence upon the mind's pliancy which makes i mean the workability and usability of the mind's pliancy now feel that your body also has this usability this workability so feel that you've attained the physical pliancy well and the ability to use your body at, at your disposal Sim tensa lundi, and it lays to Martin, lundi lula shoe, and it luboyan, but lu susu bluidian, and it gave each other a katsu kune, nigger, and penetration ship because of like gomja, nigger, tinday la katsu, but kune, she dug to do the good room, and it blew shin to Jamitini, or tinday chasu, some of the tinage is some of the And so with the body becoming very workable and having this sort of flexibility. Now you feel that you're able to apply it to virtue for as long as you wish, as much as you wish. And so now feel that you have this pliancy of the body, that you've attained this. Lucian to Jamal of Denny, and be Lu and be deeply la Lula that they were Mindoji. Gain it all Lube Yambu shoes it and Luke Susu Lubo de Casino Pina Pituig Lubo de Chasso, Samita, Lucian Janke Dewadi. Lucian Lesro was Shinjan of Denny, Lu Yamu Denny Reja Chevalje, Tindavajan, Lula Dewa Mindoji, Tindaji Chungsu, Sami, or Tindavi that Lu Shinjanke Dewaji Samotamachis. And now with the physical pliancy, which makes the body workable and usable, now there starts to be generated this special kind of pleasure, a kind of bliss that you feel per permeating your body. And this is a blissful physical sensation that pervades throughout the body, allows you to use your body as you wish. And it's like uh, it is an object of touch or a physical sensation. So feel that you have attained this special physical bliss of plants. Lula Tinegi Dewa Ganyan Petrichai Jumala Dini, and it Sim Dian, the Kalhana, Manitin Sim Shindu Jamit Dewaji, or the Tindaji Chungsu, Samni with a Sim Nana Dewa, but one time in the Dewa Pes Chukaji, Tindaji Chumaji, some much Tamachis Dewa. And so, in dependence on this physical bliss, now feel that your mind also has a special kind of bliss and happiness, a bliss that you never experienced before. 
something different. And feel that now you have attained this special mental bliss of pliancy. Tinde and so now as you have these powerful sensations of bliss in your body and mind feel that they start to just slightly relax they start to become more a little more mild so that the great joy isn't sort of overwhelming or becoming too exciting but you become more calm with the happiness the bliss is still there it's just become more calm and so now you can continuously focus with this bliss there and feel that you've attained this concentration of pliancy. And so now you've attained the serenity. And with this powerful serenity, you're able to start to overcome the afflictions, attachment, and aversion, and delusion. So feel that you have this ability now to truly press and overcome the afflictions that arise, the afflictions which are in your mind. Feel that you have this ability to overcome afflictions and not in non-virtue. Do 
Sinne Gute Ursu Menaya, Yuba Mubachin do Dosen to a Gombilla, and Yuba Jesu to Gombas, but that day to Yansi Yansi Goma, the Namshin only Pangim Shiji Twigi, Goba to the US, or in the Zanit Tindavi, that some of Tan Nature and Gom Dalindu, or Tindation, and Yansi Yansi that to the Juna, or Tindation Bashim Dwaina, and the Sinne Gugi Dini, Gom did the future, which was Namshin only that I'm Gachi. This type of meditation that we're doing is called the meditation of imagination or a literal rendering meditation by the method of using belief and faith. But by doing it again, uh, once in a while, or again and again, now and again, then you understand clearly that there really are these stages of development of our consciousness. You'll understand clearly that it's possible to develop your consciousness and going through these, this process of generating serenity. Tutsi Tebaje duba zundu shinyang pangu di dogo mares. Nda di mana zundu shinyang tangu gom ningari gom da jamma nyonge tindeji ki jimbi ondu shina tindesin dogo resin peja na di lamrim na sunga zangge tindesin shuwa yins. And when you do this practice, this meditation, you don't always have to begin with the four antidotes for laziness. The confidence, yearning, effort, pliancy, antidotes. That's when you're really just beginning the practice of serenity and the text list, uh, they explain that as being the prerequisite or the first step before beginning to meditate. When you're a little more stable and have a greater habit in the practice, then you're, it's fine if you begin this meditation at one of the actual, of the nine mental states, you can begin right there. What <laughs> And when you have this, when you do have the strong desire and determination that I'm going to go uh, into this practice, develop serenity, fully develop serenity, then you will gather those six conditions that are the pre preconditions for having serenity. And with those six conditions present, and you go through this practice, then it is it is realistic to think I'm going to achieve serenity and to go about the practice in that way. Now, if anyone has any questions, then we can begin a question and answer session.
I have a question about um, when visualizing the Buddha as our meditation object, is there any value in um, thinking about receiving from the Buddha, like light rays or anything like that, and helping to stabilize the meditation? And, uh, Sangi Chandan de Gikula, so the Migba Shana, Ra Sangi Chandan de Ne, Sangi Chandan de Gikuni, Kune, Nazola, the Wizard Wizard Popa Dong, Wizard Troa, Dong Jing Jinla Trouble, Jinla Wizard gets hooky Jinla Shuya deal, Nazo Sam Temple Chagi, Paper Sugar Bay, Paper Chagi Bay. Pengit <laughs> ane de cho di la yan pen di la pe ba nan xin ani tu ba san ji chu nen de ku su la min ni ko ba de dan ga ran su le tang bu ge ti ni ko m di be ko m san wa yin sin da na bu na su yo re sta mi de ma bu na la o ti yo zan ani ti ku da gong dang de ani be ta me ba ma yin ba chi yo se te ba ku ni ba kin zi ni su ngi ni ba yo ba wo ni ji yo wa ti de ge ta san lo ta ni o ti ko me chi wa yin ani ko m di ya che bu du de la tin de so yes, there's definitely going to be some value and benefit to really visualizing the Buddha as though it's really the Buddha. This is the key point that, uh, again, uh, speaking of that, to really, like, the, the light rays, what does that mean? It means that you visualize, like, the Buddha is really a living Buddha there in front of you. And so not just thinking of the Buddha as, I mean, you know, it's there's a different sense than if you just think of it as, you know, a fo an image, a picture, or drawing, or photo, or a statue. But to really visualize like this living Buddha emanating light rays, then it actually, and similarly, like when we, you know, request blessings and visualize the light rays purifying our sickness or illness or purifying our negativities, that also has a, str a strong impact. So here too, uh, you really feel the Buddha is really there with the 32 marks and the 80 minor signs. And it makes the mind um, able to have that clear, vivid appearance, strong, right? You have that ability to um, make the visualization vivid and clear more easily. And you have a greater liking for the, for the practice. You have more desire to do the meditation, more um, you know, eagerness and, and kind of uh, joy in it. So even in the Lambrim itself, it is, it is spoken about that when you uh, visualize uh, the Buddha like this, it's, it's said that it's, it's like uh, the cornerstone of a wall, 
where the cornerstone of a wall is at, at the you know the perpendicular where um, the the two uh, sides of a, a wall you know on the perpendicular angle meet to um, I guess the two faces and that supports both sides both of those sides of the wall both of those faces of the wall so. Um, so that I was just confused about what is the analogy, like what are the two things in reality uh, of this practice that we're talking about that are both benefited? So like the two, these two um, parts of a wall that are both benefited by the cornerstone, if we have this kind of visualization of Buddha, it has the benefit of increasing our meditation ability and strengthening that as well as um, having a powerful ability to accumulate virtue and overcome negativities, purify negativities. So it, has a, it does make a big difference to do it this way. Thank you. Um <laughs> Tinde <laughs> Any Pacto in a chair in Sumero, Tindicala, any chinid Lagintar, Nidi, Dilla Chumbachin, Toraz in Chiba in a minute. So, um, Karma's asking about if we are reciting the prayers that we regularly recite, which, um, I mean, for Tibetans, is very common to recite these as daily prayers. Um, I, I think maybe not as common for the, um, the non Tibetan speakers, but they, um, there's these prayers like the uh, like the daily recitations related with the Buddha. And then there's a prayer to Chenrezig called, the, called the, praise of the, the praise of the Arya, something like that, praise of the noble one. Um, so is it uh, good or is it, you know, is, is, is it advised to sort of do your serenity practice while you're doing these praises, like visualizing whichever deity the praises aim to? ロスナスオトディタンテタキンエシュエディカスナシネコナシネコナミクスカニゴンゲンジーナナナズエトバシタジンガナズタバトニカサジギシネジミクスカニゴンゲンジーナエトバシジャドビコナラミネコマアセディ
Tara, it could be whichever deity you have the affinity, affinity to. And, you know, for a person who is desiring liberation, who wishes to attain liberation, and you go through these praises, and you are reflecting on and remembering all their qualities, then this, it can become a, a practice of serenity by focusing on the qualities of these, de of the deities. Uh, so in the text that we're um, referencing and using as our source texts here, the, the main advice is for an, someone who is starting out in their serenity practice. So for an initial beginning practitioner of serenity, then it's more effective to just use the body or the form, the form of Shakyamuni Buddha's body. And that's a sort of uh, more suitable object to use to start out with. Uh, but um, in general, uh, those, uh, you know, can also reflecting on the qualities of the, of the deities can also become a serenity practice too. I have a question that's much more basic, um, I think. And it's about the mental pliancy and physical pliancy. And I believe Geshe-la said that first comes mental pliancy, then physical pliancy follows. Um, but I think all of us have probably had that experience where you're trying to meditate and then you have an itch or, or a muscle hurts or a leg has fallen asleep and that in itself can be a distraction. So what actually happens if you've attained mental pliancy, does your body, when they say it becomes more serviceable, does that mean you're no longer having the, those sensations or is your concentration so strong that you're just not even noticing those sensations? And now you're referring specifically to the mental or the physical or just both in general? Both in general, because yeah. if I remember right, the physical follows, but that once once they happen, they sort of are um, interdependent. Yeah. Yeah. だ、ずぼのんぎ、ちょろ、カロンぎ、だ、なみんちゃくとぐら。なんかそう、うん、だ、パ、あ、さんば、パ、ショート、なみんショート、とぐら。ちゃんぞ、ずさんぎ、しん
illness or physical pain or problems in your body that are present, but the mind isn't able to feel them. So you're not able to be influenced by them or feel them because you, you know, first the mind has the pliancy, which then um, causes that wind, the energy wind to pervade throughout the whole body and thus the physical pliancy arises. And so with, when that physical pliancy is there, no matter what's happening with your body, so of course there can still be illness or some kind of, you know, a situation of pain or, you know, I guess maybe sickness or illness is the better word to use than pain. Yeah, probably, um, you know, physical ailment or illness, then um, those things can, uh, well, while they're still uh, present, there's no, um, you know, your mind overcomes uh, that with the great joy and delight that's present in the mind. And so you do not feel those. Thank you so much. Thanks. Um, I think uh, Geshela was talking a little bit about how the um, bliss arises um, and then how, you know, it kind of calms down slowly um, and becomes more stable. Is that done with a conscious effort or does it just kind of somehow, you know, um, arise, uh, happen, happen by itself? Good night. The Rang Shingi Chagede Bay, so sir, Chig, so sir, Gang Tsugne, this Hulaj, Hulaso Gore Bays, Yamanang Rang Shingi, Hula Chagede Bay. On the home of the tea, tea to buy your study. Listen, Tabu Kian, the Lusum Shinjang, Deva Shukaji Kiroa, to do Shinetogamaris. That tin it digs the jita, Benamaranzu Petit Shire. Maranzu been the Tobu New, Jimaranzu Benachi, Mima Loma, Maruja Susu, been a color of the Tobu in the Pinja in the Pamain. To hope the two in the Tambu two in the same of Katur Chimujungua. That day is the Nichatung days, Gajishin, Deni Machavazine, who made it at Hara under the same Nala young, Tagi di Nanshinji Mewajiwa. Midua draw him at the same with Nepoti, Koranshing in Namiro Charo, who tended Nanshinji Chagres, Koranshing with Chadu, who tended it in it. She never told what in Jesus something she had to pay the dish as she has. Mamrinola, what they did, Tara, Koran, what the Jung to Tama Maris, Koran Ramashingi, Tambuki, not Chuman, they were Jim, and the Chambu Jedi, and these in the Korama, Name, Dobby Chani, or Tindage in it, she naked in it, and twenty two eighty or Tinuko to go and soon do so. And so, what happens is first you have this kind of overwhelming bliss once they arise and th at that stage it's not considered uh to have been uh, it's not yet considered the attainment of serenity quite yet and so then eventually gradually it calms down and an example that's given in lambrim text for this is sort of like when you meet an old friend you know you meet a very good friend or family member that you you know haven't seen much lately and so you initially see them and right when you first meet there's you have uh, you're overjoyed there's maybe this this stronger strong sense of joy in meeting them and then you sit down and you have a cup of tea and you chat for a while and a little you know half a day goes by and the person's exactly the same but your attitude and and your mind state sort of shifts and you know it gets you get less excited to be uh, to see them right you get the, like that kind of overjoyed feeling kind of um it, it also it calms down so likewise when you first generate this bliss of physical and mental pliancy it's a bit overwhelming 
and then gradually on its own. So you don't have to make uh, any intentional effort to do it, but on its own, it will calm down. And that that's the point where we um, say that serenity has been attained after that calms down. But couldn't the bliss, if it comes um, so so powerfully, could that not also lead to a dis distraction if you don't know how to um, manage or handle it? Any dewa shuktagne, shinjangi dewa shuktagne, chik sam tuge gi nyanka mindu as, sam tuge gi nyanka kare jani yomare is kind of na, as of me. Gangsung <laughs> Tobja so at this point, when the strong physical and mental bliss of bliss of physical and mental pliancy arises, yes, it's a powerful kind of joy and bliss, but it, there's no danger, no chance that it will cause any distraction. It actually serves to increase your concentration on the object because you're you're you know it's it's the concentration is is just being kind of um you know com uh, uh, being supported by you could say the bliss that's arising and so you continue the concentration at that point and then it naturally calms down and at that point you have the at achievement of serenity where now you're really able to you know overcome non-virtue you're able to overcome the afflictions so while uh, so already by so while ordin ordinary pleasure or joy can be distracting if we're you know, you know playing around and having fun kind of that yes that can be distracting or the pleasure of you know good food and sense pleasure of course that can be distracting we can be enjoying and completely forget whatever else we were doing but this is a different kind of of bliss or pleasure so this is something that comes from the mind that's coming because of the concentration. And at this point already, you've completely overcome the faults of laxity and excitement. So there's no possibility of falling under the influence of laxity and excitement. So already at that stage, those faults are have been taken care of. So um, this is a kind of a unique kind of, um, of bliss that increases concentration and does not harm it. Uh, you know, someone who's attained it understands what it's like, but, you know, otherwise it's kind of uh, hard to, you know, get what it's like, but it is, this is how it's um, described in the, in the text. <clears throat> Hello. 
so the uh, question is about the time frame or the uh, length of sessions and how to time your practice or how to how to schedule your practice. So is it best to do if you know you can fit in like 10 minutes each day or maybe to do 30 minutes on the weekends on like Saturday, Sunday? Or to spend, you know, more time a few times per a few times per month, if you can. Uh, so, what's the best way to organize uh, your time for practice of serenity? Well, so that the command of the that the the jong jong that the the chuna that the that the the chuna the that the thing that the that to do some do so so get money. Just on the joy, that what the way now that on the. Tipperly Dundare, so it's, it's good if you can do at least weekly, do a, a bit of an extended session, say 30 minutes, that should be enough time to really get the experience of, you know, going through the sort of nine states like this and completing that whole uh, re meditation. That's a review of those. Um, if you only do, you know, five or 10 minutes, then it's not going to be enough time to complete that and really get a good experience. So if you say you can do that on a weekly basis, at, at least once a week, then in one month, you know, you'll have done it four times, you start to gain some deeper experience and throughout, you know, over the course of a year, as time goes, you have, you know, more and more uh, depth of experience about it. You know, if you just do it on like a monthly basis, then again, you know, it's too easy to, to lose track of, lose track of it, get distracted with different activities. If you really are, in, you know, you know, determined to say like, you, 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 you know, want to go above and beyond and say, look, I really want to attain this, say within a year, then you start getting into a more serious practice where you have the, um, the, the scheduling of having four sessions per day. It's like a traditional, uh, timing for someone doing like retreat practice to have four sessions per day. So you would really need to you know, take that much time to really um, uh, go more intensively. Also, that two minutes, some so if there are no more questions, then let's leave uh, the class for tonight. Gone <laughs> 
Kewa nyamba meba yang kone kondo pewa shu kewa di kewa kwen sonam ishi tzot sonam ishi le chongwe tamba kwenye toba shu Tuchi che thank you good night Thank you Thank you Thank you Thank you Thank you